So the idea here is pretty straightforward. In this video, I set out to establish how a 3D printed loudspeaker enclosure stacks up against one that's made of wood. And here's a mysterious crate full of stuff to help make that happen. Let's get into it. Right away, I want to keep this simple, focusing strictly on the difference between wood and thermoplastic filament, PLA specifically. I'm not interested in the secondary effects of vent resonances or any other inductive aberrations, so the enclosure that I've gone with for this project is a simple sealed container measuring 30 centimeters in height, 19 centimeters in width, and 24 centimeters in depth. The mounting hole was modeled to fit a single FE166EN full-range driver from Fostex, giving us a chance to run frequency sweeps across the entire audible spectrum. And as per usual, the enclosure will print in two parts that interlock with a tongue and a groove. Over here I've gone with a 0.2mm layer height, four perimeters all the way around, and a 20% gyroid infill representing the typical density of my acoustic prints. And while that's coming along, let's get back to the crate. Not that you can see the shipping label, but this has traveled here all the way from Copus Audio in Malvern, UK, where a small group of proper audiophiles known for their quality handmade woodwork and joinery have been doing some incredible things. I don't want to reveal too much too soon, but since I'm already involved in some collaborative R&D, some of which is relevant to the maker community at large, I thought I'd share. So, while Team PLA is already 50 some odd hours into completion with another 50 some to go, let's take a look at the opposing corner. And here we have six challengers, dimensionally identical to the enclosure being printed, each representing a different type of wood, including mahogany, European oak, American black walnut, birch ply, MDF, and just to show off, a dovetailed mix of sapili, oak, and walnut, because we fancy. So, once the second half of the PLA enclosure is done printing, Sophie is ready to help put it together. And there it is, weighing in at 1.4 kilograms, having taken just over 4 days to complete. But don't clutch your pearls just yet, as there is another. This time printed on the Creality CR10 version 2 at 50% infill over the course of 8 days and weighing in at 2.51 kilograms, which also makes it the second heaviest sample of the lot. So. These are the test subjects. Now let's get to some testing. And the first thing that I'd like to visualize are the damping properties of each material. To do that, I'll swing this pendulum against the side of each enclosure delivering a series of uniform collisions. These, in turn, will be captured for a closer look in just a second. And here are the results, arranged in order from the faintest at the top to the loudest at the bottom. Bear in mind, of course, that these values represent the peak registered signal amplitude at the time of impact. What we're interested in is the amount of time it takes for each material to absorb the energy from that impact. And when we view the samples by their spectral composition, it becomes apparent that PLA at 20% infill takes the longest at around 200 milliseconds. However, by 50%, it becomes competitive with several of the woods. Mahogany and birch tie for the best damping properties, at around the 100 millisecond mark, though it's also worth noting that while mahogany absorbs the energy fairly evenly, birch appears to ring at certain frequencies. So, with that established, let's get these wired up for some response analysis, and here I'll be using the same driver from one enclosure to the next. A ring of Bluetech will ensure an airtight seal, and these foam pads will help decouple the enclosures from the desk. By the way, the reason we can do this in less than anechoic conditions is because we do want these boxes to interact with the room, take advantage of that corner boundary, and just generally behave the way speakers do in a casual, albeit controlled listening space with the enclosure material as the only variable. The frequency response will be measured with the new U-Mic 2 from me DSP, which I will talk about in a separate video, it literally just got here. There's also a pair of the Behringer C2 microphones for a close approximation of a near-field listening experience. So, one after another, the enclosures are tested with a wideband frequency sweep, and when we overlay the response graphs, they appear nearly identical. In fact, it's not until we expand the y-axis that some minor deviations come to light, but they are just that. Minor. The biggest difference between these materials comes down to their harmonic properties, and if we overlay the distortion results, a few things become apparent. Right away, the enclosure printed with a 20% infill is the clear outlier. The spectral maps confirm this, and so do my listening tests, but more importantly, it is also the only outlier, even in terms of weight, suggesting that with enough mass, thermoplastic can be a viable enclosure material, at least for the patient enthusiast. In the end, even at 50% infill, PLA doesn't quite stack up to birch or mahogany, but it also doesn't trail that far behind. 
If you'd like to have a listen, I'll close things out with a demo captured on the two Behringer mics, and I'll be interested to know if you can hear any difference between the recordings. As always, let me know what gear you're listening with, rate the video as you see fit, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!